So David, maybe to give people a little background, you and Brad started, Brad Feldman, excuse me, started Techstars 10 years ago, roughly Just, just about 10 years ago. Thanks for having me. This is an awesome event. Absolutely, and you've been one of my role models. I think you guys, uh, in addition to one other uh, nameless uh, incubator, uh, gave us a lot of inspiration and ideas for how to get started. But I think, you know, maybe to kind of point out some things that I think uh, Techstars is doing, differently and uniquely. Uh, you guys are all over the U.S., all over the world. Uh, you're not in Silicon Valley. That's right. Uh, except you, for right now. Except for right now, yes, exactly. Um, you guys uh, have been working a lot with corporate strategics to expand investments around the world and in interesting verticals. Uh, and uh, you guys are no stranger to doing lots of deals. Yeah, I mean, a little bit of the update. I mean, people obviously know 500 that are here. Um, similar components, right? We have the accelerator piece, which people Absolutely. know us for. And we've done probably 30 or 40 investments together at yep. least, maybe more. Including SendGrid, including SendGrid. SendGrid. Uh, and, and many others. But um, that, that's now, we run 25 of those around the world in different locations, right. mostly U.S. and Europe. 25 separate programs yep. around the world. Yep. Each of those are doing about 10 investments a yep. year, roughly? Yep, so scaled up to about 250 companies and growing through the Accelerator platform. And then the similar events platform, we have Startup Weekend. You guys acquired uh, Startup or yeah. reacquired Startup Weekend, I guess? Yeah, you it was started out of... It's funny, it started out of Techstars, but then, yeah, seven, eight years later, right? Um, right. Sort of acquired it into the organization. And so this is a thousand of those that, that we put on a year to try to inspire folks towards entrepreneurship. Right. And then similarly, you know, surround that with venture capital, we have about 300 million in, in venture capital that we manage. And so you have a maybe 150 that's dedicated, 150 million that's dedicated to Techstars network and investments and another 100 fi 150 through bullet time? Um, no, it's just sort of, if you think about holistically all the different vehicles we've had over 10 okay. years. So there's venture funds, there's local investment funds in New York or London, right? right. Sort of local activity. Um, we actually have funds that you know provide convertible notes as soon as companies get into Techstars. So it's I all see. the different vehicles. Got it. Um, I guess maybe just to highlight a couple of investments, I know you've been successful. You were an early investor in Uber or SendGrid and, and tech, uh, Twilio, excuse me, correct? Twilio, yes. Right. We're, uh, we're, I think... Uh, both very early there. You were actually involved as you an were advisor, in if I remember right, along with I, I was at Founders Fund at the time. Yeah, and uh, of course the Uber um, angel round has been a blast to watch those guys go crazy, and hopefully SendGrid's our next one together <laughs> that, that will do really I well in IPO someday. I think that might uh, come to pass sooner than later, actually. Uh, Twilio is filed to go public. I think that's actually happening this week. Uh, a lot of parallels maybe between Twilio and SendGrid, both companies that really depend on developers as a lot of the primary channel into enterprise? Yep, it's uh, one of the things I've always uh, invested in is infrastructure, right? Something that takes something hard on the internet and makes it easier, which is why I love Twilio and SendGrid when I first saw them. Right. And uh, I was fortunate to participate in the SendGrid seed round and then later in the series A and B rounds. Um, but could you tell us a little bit about the SendGrid story? Because I think it's really one of the signature Techstars investments and I think they've actually uh, published a blog post that says they might be going public sometime yeah, in the future. I've been a little aggressive. I mean, we hope that that happens. I'm, I'm on the board there, so I'll, I'll be a little careful. But, um, you know, companies publish that they're around $100 million in revenue. It's an infrastructure company. If you think of Twilio as being the sort of phone-based stuff primarily, right. SendGrid is an equivalent in the email world. So yep. billions of emails, about 2-3% of the world's email now flowing through the company. 2 or 3% of the world's email. Yeah. And how much of that email. is spam? Importantly, <laughs> legitimate email. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I, I think I get. I met uh, Isaac Saldana, the founder of SendGrid, back around 2009, I believe. I'm not sure when. Yeah, they that's when they did it. And um, you know, it's funny. People think of, of 500 and YC and Techstars maybe competitive, but we do a lot of stuff together, right? And that's what we seed do. investing is. So tons of common portfolio companies. I, I think we try and manufacture as much controversy for PR purposes, but. <laughs> I think we've invested in probably over 100 companies that either came from Techstars or YC over the years. And yeah. so happy for your success as well as our own. Um, you guys, uh, in addition to SendGrid, have had some uh, big wins recently, or at least looks like some big wins. I guess ClassPass is certainly one of those that might be uh, considered a signature Techstars deal. Yeah, I mean, there's you know there's dozens of companies. PillPack, some people have been reading about. There's some controversy around those guys. Um, companies like Localytics. I mean, there's there's lots of companies that are sort of you know hundreds of millions in revenue and sort of getting there. Right. Um, it takes a while, obviously, to get your big breakouts, but 
you know, bef before um, really Twilio is the first, you know, sort of unicorn going public that I've been involved in. Right. I've been doing this for 10 years, so it just takes some time. It takes a while, yeah. I, I think the, I, when we invested in Twilio, it was either fall of 2008 or spring of 2009, yeah. so it's been probably close to eight years. Yep. Um, what do you think are, I think, you know, maybe to step back a little bit, I, I know that YC was very successful in starting out in Boston, has now claimed Silicon Valley as its home, but you and Brad uh, really made, you know, Denver or Boulder area, I guess Boulder really, uh, put it on the map and then later New York before a lot of other folks went to New York and now other places all over the world. Why, why did you guys choose to start outside the valley or out outside maybe traditional uh, yep. places where <coughs> startups get started? Yeah, so I think DNA is a part of the answer. It's just who we are. But, um, you know, I think the reason we started Techstars in Boulder is because that's where we live. <laughs> so pretty right. straightforward. Um, wanting it to be a better ecosystem. Finding a model that does seem to have an impact, right? Really engages mentors, creates angel investors where there were none. Right. And, you know, we took that to Boston um, in 2009, and it worked there too. And so we've just been on a, a march trying to bring it to more communities um, you know, around the world. We're now throughout the U.S. and Europe, not here, as we can talk right. about. But the idea is tying those communities together is a very powerful idea, this, this notion of a more global ecosystem of mentorship and support for, you know, entrepreneurs. And you guys uh, also started kind of this, you know, global accelerator network. I think originally there is, you know, some set of cities which you guys were making, you know, signature tech stars uh, efforts, but also through affiliates, other networks in lots of places, both U.S. and international. Yeah, so GAN exists today as a standalone nonprofit um, that we spun out, but it was a pretty simple, you, you probably experienced the same. We were getting calls every day. How do you do an accelerator? We want to do that, right? We want to do an accelerator in Cleveland. And I said, well, you know, here's how we do it. Give first, right? We, we try to be helpful, but that got to be a full-time job, and so we hired a guy and created a nonprofit to do it, and that's now got, you know, dozens or hundreds of member organizations. So, so you guys have to be one of the largest investing organizations in the world, maybe 150 or more people at this point? Yeah, we're about 150 people um, and uh, very distributed as a company. So if you come to right. Boulder, you'll see maybe 30. Okay. Right, so the people are out in the markets that we run in. And how many of those folks are outside the U.S. right now? Um, it's, it's about 25%, so okay. about 75% U.S. And where, how did you guys get started on, you know, developing the partnerships with corporate entities and working together on building vertical programs? I know you're, you know, very active in London. We work with two or three of your organizations in Europe. Yep. So, so we run accelerators with partners uh, like Barclays, Virgin, and, uh, Virgin Media in London, uh, Ford, you know, many others. Um, we were first approached actually by Microsoft. We sort of okay. looked at our model and said, gee, we want to do something like that in Got Seattle. It. So we built a program for them as an experiment. And we and found that was with Xbox and or? Yeah, it was around Connect at the time. Virtual Connect, yeah, okay, this, right, this right. This thing, you know. Um, and there were a lot of cool companies that were leveraging that and they wanted to be helpful. But what we've really found is powerful about it is teaching these corporations how to work with entrepreneurs right. in, a, in a way that's, you know, sort of not take first, but give first. Yeah. And hopefully that's a meta impact that this activity will have on them. What, what do you see as challenges for startups and corporates to work together? And what do you see as kind of the opportunity? Well, I think um, many of the companies that approach us to, to partner with us with the accelerators um, come at it with an attitude that needs adjustment. Yeah. Um, and the ones that really get it are the ones we try to work with. Um, they're really thinking of, you know, how can I have the right to buy this company? Or how can I have the right to do business with this company? We tell them, you don't want that. You're going to get the worst entrepreneurs. They, they don't want to buy the company? You don't want the right to buy the company. That's an important oh, okay. nuance. You don't want to contract all this stuff. You just want to be helpful, right? Provide some funding, provide that space, That seems really mentorship. zen, right? Yeah, and they, a lot of them don't get it. If you, you love something, set it free. That's right. If it comes back, then you can acquire it. I'm from it. Boulder, so you understand. Um, but I think you know, that's the idea, is when they can be taught that they just need to be helpful, and then they get every opportunity yeah. in the world with that company. What right. do you think the superpowers are for corporate entities? Or how, how can corporates sort of be valuable in a world where there's tons of capital from VCs and angels and others? Yeah, I mean, they, they can king make. I mean, my favorite example, everybody's seen the BB-8 character, little, the little droid. That's one of our companies called Sphero. 
was a perfectly interesting company doing tens of millions in revenue, went, went to the Disney accelerator that we run. Disney comes in and says, hey, we have this idea. You know, we got this new character. Bob Iger sits down with him and says, you know, what if you created this robot that could roll? It wouldn't just be a ball that you play with with your smartphone, right? It would be BB-8 a character. And you know, the company's trajectory is just completely different. So I think these companies can add IP, know-how, distribution capability. Yeah, so it seems like you know, cu customers, certainly distribution channels to customers is one area of, of you know, benefit that you know, corporates may have that VCs don't. And certainly the IP, you know, for a company like Disney, which has tremendous amounts of content, uh, tremendous amounts of IP now from both Pixar, uh, from ESPN, from all kinds of different you know media and content networks. Yeah, pl plus, I got to have a website with um, you know like a lightsaber on it, which was like a childhood <laughs> dream. So it was cool to have that website you know to advertise the, the opportunity. Uh, what's what's the downside of that relationship, or what challenges do you see that you try and you know help them work around or avoid, both startups and corporates? Well, I think. Again, the upfront, um, helping educate them that you know you don't actually want to have all of these options and the agreements you have with these companies. You want to just be helpful, and um, options ra means board seats, blocking yeah, rights, I, I, the right to buy the company, right, the right to do business with the company, the right to invest in the company. Um, many of them, most of them, ask for those things, and it's an education process to get them to understand you actually don't want that. Right. Right. Any concerns about the fact that they have access to information and startups might be doing things that actually compete with that corporate uh, entity? Yep, we talked to them a lot about that too, and the idea being, you know, when you're going to pick a company, right, make sure that I the intent is to help, right, right, and not to somehow take from that, that company, because that just creates a very bad reputation for you, just like it would for any other investor. So when you guys get the chance to work with a company like Barclays or others, I mean, obviously they bring a lot to the table. How do you how do you structure that relationship? Are they, you know, paying you to put those programs together? Are they investing in you as a fund or in the companies? Um, you, you know, the, our normal model is that we have local ecosystem LPs. So if we go to New York, it's thirty investors in New York that come okay. together. This is just replacing that capital, um, and so it's the cost of running the actual program, right? And right. their goal is be around the activity see what comes out of it that's interesting, maybe have an opportunity to do something with those companies, buy them or whatever. And you have seen you know, acquisitions that, that happen that sure. obviously are, are not pre-contracted. Um, so I think you know, it's, it's really about making sure that the partner's good, has the right intent. And then inside the program, you know, usually it's not on campus, it's off campus somewhere. With Nike, we did it in Portland in the Pearl District. Right. You, know, you get you know, the, the executives coming by and hanging out on the couches. So it's not you know, high security, corporate feeling. <laughs> right? It just feels like it's an entrepreneurial vibe around that company and it really attracts the right executives. Got it. Um, when you guys are looking at new regions or new verticals to go after, what's kind of your framework for how you make those decisions? You guys are in 25 geographies now. I assume you're planning to do more in the future. Yeah. Um, one of the things I think has been real interesting for, you know, for the capital we put around the system is our, our LPs, you know, see the opportunity uh, and, and the performance of what we have done. And, and we believe there's an opportunity to do much more globally. So, um, you know, we've been fortunate to, to work with folks like Morgan Stanley and Utemco and Vesco as LPs. And, you know, for them, um, they're interested in the international opportunity too. I think, you know, I, I probably see we you more. We certainly believe in that, but I know there's a lot of folks who are still skeptical, particularly about exits and liquidity but internationally. Y you're out there, I see you more out there than here, right? I mean, you I know, we're. That's because Christine does all this stuff that's here. Right. She's got the show here. They, they tend to think that I work better not being nearby. There's, there's huge arbitrage opportunity, right, to help companies enter this market, right? Th there's so many great companies around the world that uh, are undervalued, and I think. Substantially. You know, the entrepreneurship is not just going to come from one place in the future, and that's, uh, I think, part of our DNA. A any concerns about how you get those companies to exit internationally? Um, I think a lot of them end up opening offices here, right, and building yeah. networks and relationships here. So that's one of the things you're uniquely positioned to do. I, I think we have some of that too. Um, you know, companies we see wanting to come to New York or Boston or plug into the network. Um, where they feel like you know, immediately just by being here, they're more noticed, maybe more valued. So I think that's the arbitrage opportunity at scale for a company. So I, I was encouraged to ask a question about how Techstars and 500 are different or similar, but I'm gonna take a different tack and ask you how Y Combinator and Techstars are different or similar. 
and maybe in particular uh, some blog posts by Sam, I think uh, maybe a few months back about uh, the YC fellowship program and how everyone yeah, should just I wait for YC to pick them until they uh, jump into an accelerator <laughs> program. It's interesting, right? I mean, I think, um, you know, they're based here, you're based here, but you're, you're reaching out to the world and doing things for the world and, and living in those communities. I think we're doing that too, trying to be a I part I of I think we're squished between your two models. I think YC's here, you guys are everywhere else, and we're trying to figure out which of those two we want to yeah. be. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Um, but I think, you know, the idea that, um, you know, people have to come here, right, to do their program, they're starting to realize, well, maybe we need to actually reach out and offer what we do to more people. Um, that's something that, that, you know, I think we both believed in for a long so time. So bring the capital to the entrepreneur instead of expecting the entrepreneur to come to the capital. Well, be a, be a part of the ecosystem, right? Be part of the community and try to tie those communities together, which is a very powerful idea. Yeah. And Brad uh, Feld is a foundry partner, uh, founder of Foundry Partners, but also uh, was critically involved in getting Techstars off the ground. You guys have both been, I think, promoters of community outside the valley and, and really seeing what you and Brad built in Boulder uh, in a place that wasn't really even, I would say, you know, a top 10 or top 20 MTA yep. um, and built it into one of the more substantial startup uh, ecosystems in the U.S. Yeah, I think it's usually like Colorado's fourth or fifth now in venture capital and, and Brad and Foundry Group have a lot to do with that. But punching um, way above their weight. In yeah, terms of I, I think it's the, the bridges metric. that have been built to capital, right? And, you know, I, I, I like to say, you know, we're people somehow sometimes perceive us as anti-Silicon Valley. It's not at all the case. We're just kind of pro everywhere else. We, right. we believe that uh, great companies can be built all over the world and already are if you look closely. Wh what's your take on other geographies in the U.S. outside Silicon Valley and maybe other geographies around the world? Where, what's top two or three cities in the U.S. you find to be interesting and top two or three cities outside the U.S.? Well, it probably is not a huge surprise that there's a lot of uh, really amazing stuff going on in, in places like Boston and New York. Right. Um, you know, to me, LA is a fascinating yeah, ecosystem. Yeah, I, I feel like LA is the undiscovered story, although maybe yeah. that's being discovered in the last year or two. Yeah, we have, you know, multiple programs uh, there and, you know, spend a lot of time there. Some great investors there that really Actually, get it. SendGrid came out of the Southern S California that's area. Right, that's right. I mean, if there was more support for SendGrid there, it, it wouldn't have moved to Boulder Might to, have, you know, right? To come to Boulder. <laughs> Well, luckily, there wasn't at the time, and we took advantage of that. Uh, you guys were one of the first uh, folks to really bring uh, the accelerator model to New York. I think Techstars New York is probably one of the premier accelerators in that region. Um, what do you think is uh, unique or different about New York than maybe Silicon Valley or other places? Well, it's just, uh, I mean, there's there's such uh, diversity, and there's so much, uh, you know. Diversity different in New industries, York? Different industries, I mean, right? It's, it's like the, you know, not everybody speaks startup. You come here right. and it's like you, you're walking down the street and all you hear is, you know, product Watching. market fit, right? Yeah. AR, like VR. literally I was uh, just walking here and it's everyone talking about, you know, internet yeah. stuff. And there it's, you know, a lot of Wall Street and fashion and other things. So um, I think you just, you know, you don't see necessarily so much consumer, right, facing stuff. And it's just a different mix, I think. How about outside the U.S.? Where's your three favorite uh, places? Um, I'm a huge fan of what's going on in Berlin. Really? Okay. Um, I've been spending time there. We have we have I think two. That was Jess Erickson whooping it up in our crowd. We have two programs there. We're in a program with Metro, which is a, a corporate right. there, and then we have a city, uh, Techstars Berlin there, and uh, you have three programs in London, if I'm three. If that's I'm right. Not, uh, yeah. Mistaken. That's right. Um, and so, just you know, I think London people sort of get right that it's really changed in the yep. last five years. A lot. Berlin, I think, you know, has a feel of you know uh, just a place that's up and coming. There's lots of Speaking talent. Gates. Yeah. Uh, okay, so London and Berlin are maybe easy choices for Europe. Where's your other, uh, you know, city of the future, geek city of the future outside, uh, you know, the U.S.? There's going to be some interesting stuff in, in the Nordics uh, going on. I know you've okay. spent some time there. Yes, um, absolutely. Lots of, lots of interesting uh, yeah, background and history there. So little sunlight, you can't do anything but code. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, I don't know. I, I, you know, there's places out of the way that people don't even know about, like Waterloo uh, in Ontario, Canada. Amazing stuff going yeah. on there. Like mind-blowing stuff going on there. Definitely right? have some you know. Canucks here in the crowd. One of our uh, partners, Sanjay Segal, That's right. is actually shout Toronto out for Waterloo. Waterloo. I mean, it's it's incredible source of talent. I think you know a lot of it flows here today, right? And it won't always do that. Yep. 
Um, I guess, you know, you've certainly been around the industry a lot. What do you see is different about accelerators these days? Or let's, let's just say, if you were to start an accelerator program today, uh, what would you do differently, better, or, you know, not trying to be, you know, in the juggernauts, uh, which are YC and Techstars and others? Uh, uh, probably today I would definitely focus on, you know, a, a specific domain, right? Focus um, on a, a vertical. Uh, yeah, f find something that you, you have a, a key advantage in because there are thousands of these things today and I think there's a few that people sort of know and respect and have the track records. Um, and it's very hard to create a new one today that's going right. to have enough scale uh, to be meaningful. How many investments do you think you need to make to find a unicorn? Uh, let's see, if I do the math, um, uh, 200, 250 is so far what I'm seeing. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a guarantee of no, one? No, 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 no. No, but if I take the thousand companies I'm involved in, right, I think right. there's four in there. Okay, right? yep. Uh, we know of a couple, right? Yeah. Um, I may not know what they all are, but I know there's a set that probably will produce some. What's, what's enough investments per fund that you think you've got plenty of diversification to hit the target? Well, if you're talking about traditional... Um, starting, starting at seed stage or accelerator. I, I mean, I don't know why anybody would run a seed fund without at least 50 investments in it. Okay. Personally, I, and I'm a LP in probably 15 micro funds, and that's the advice I give them all. So not less than 50, and potentially up to 250 is kind of your ballpark. Well, I, in a fund, right? I would say in 50, but I think you know, expect to maybe have to invest in a magnitude, a multiple of that, to find an actual billion-dollar company. Do you do you think that there's a different perspective about a large portfolio or the spray and pray approach? than there was 10 years ago? Yeah, I, th I think it's, you know, when you look at, I'm sure your data is very similar. We're funding, you know, less than 1% of what we see, um, and we're doing it with like $100,000. So we built yeah. a platform that allows us to do that low risk, right, high velocity, r reasonable prices. We're actually, you and I, largely immune to this idea that everybody's overpaying for startups. We, we certainly, right? because of the accelerator approach and because of the international approach, our average entry point is probably sub four million. That's uh, right. Maybe uh, yours might be lower. Ours is even lower because it's not uh, so much not here. Not in maybe. the Bay Area, right? Um, and so I think those things are responsible investing at scale. It's it's you know, to me, not at all spray and pray. I have a person on the ground in New York seeing a thousand companies picking ten. Yeah. Right. Are there 10 interesting companies in New York? For sure. Yeah, Are sure. there 10 in Berlin? For sure. Right. Right. And so that's the model we've chosen to scale with. Uh, thanks, David. Really appreciate your time here today. And congrats on all, this, uh, all the amazing stuff. I hope that SendGrid is uh, on the horizon. And I, I'm fortunate and hopeful that Twilio is happening this week. Thanks for having me. And I've, it's been awesome to watch you guys rock and roll and scale, too. So amazing impact you're having. We're on the same delusion together. Let's hope we're correct. <laughs> <laughs>